The UN's human rights chief, Navi p e l e i addressed the UN General Assembly today, saying that ongoing violence in Syria likely amounts to crimes against humanity. The fact-finding mission, the Commission of Inquiry on Syria, and I myself have all concluded that crimes against humanity are likely to have been committed in Syria. I have encouraged the Security Council to refer the situation to the International Criminal Court. All member states must ensure that these crimes do not go unpunished. Yet these crimes continue to be committed as I speak. p e l e i also said that the UN Security Council's inaction has emboldened the regime of Bashar al-Assad and noted that more than 18,000 people remain in arbitrary detention. Activists today report more deaths in Idlib, Damascus and Homs, where civilian neighborhoods have been hit by shelling for more than a week now. As the violence continues, many of those injured are unable to access medical treatment, fearing reprisals by state authorities at hospitals. Human rights advocates warn this is adding to an already dire humanitarian crisis and an international crime. UN Radio's Diane Penn reports. The humanitarian group Doctors Without Borders, or MSF, reports that in Syria, medicine is being used as a weapon of persecution. MSF says the authorities there are cracking down on health workers and people wounded in the ongoing conflict and that these people risk torture and arrest. Fadela Shaib, who's spokesperson for the World Health Organization, WHO, says the agency is closely following such reports. If the reports are accurate, this is very alarming. And WHO would like to recall all parties that uh, uh, health facilities should be treated as neutral premises. They must not be used by one side or another in the conflict. Their sole purpose must be to treat and protect the health of sick and the wounded people. The World Health Organization reports a rise in injured people in the besieged city of Homs in western Syria. While it does not have a presence there, WHO has a 10-person staff in the country's capital, Damascus. Fadala Shaib spoke to an employee there on Thursday evening. They know that there are massive increase of weapon-related injured, but he wasn't able to give me any number. And he's aware also that uh, some complicated and delayed obstetric emergencies are also reported. There is also a disruption of regular health services due to lack of security, limited access. Staff cannot reach health facilities and also sick or wounded people have difficulties to reach health facilities. And we are also worried that medical supplies can be very limited and the reserve is planned for three months only. Meanwhile, the UN Human Rights Office underscores WHO's message on the neutrality of healthcare workers and patients caught in conflict. Spokesperson Rupert Colville observes that deliberately attacking medical facilities or their personnel is an international crime. International law requires that in any armed conflict, the wounded and the sick must be cared for and treated humanely. The neutrality of medical facilities must be respected. The World Health Organization says medical facilities and their employees should not be targeted in conflict and that they must treat any injured or sick person. After all, this is what they have been trained to do. Deanne Penn, United Nations Radio.